let's start by looking at some of our most fundamental integration rules. So the first one, we call this the constant rule, and it just tells us how to integrate the constant function. So if we have some constant k, and we're calculating the, integra uh, the integral of constant k, um, remember this is just a constant function, Well, how do we find the antiderivative? Well, the antiderivative of this constant function k is k times x, and then we throw our plus c on at the end. So this is really just telling us how to integrate a constant, constant function. And when we look at this constant, it's not a it it's not really attached to a variable in any way. It's just kind of a constant that's all by itself. So we want to think of this as just like unattached to a variable. All right, so that's not too bad. Integrating a constant, k, okay, we get k times x plus c. So notice that when we when we integrate, what we're kind of doing is we're we're kind of building our function up in a way. So starting with k, we're getting k times x plus c. Differentiation kind of builds, breaks it down. So we know when we differentiate, we get 0. If we start with a constant and we differentiate, we get 0. So derivatives kind of simplify the function in, in some way. And integration kind of makes the function, kind of builds it back up. All right, so that's how we integrate a constant function. Now the kind of the, the next step beyond that is how do we integrate a power function? And so we have a special rule called the power rule for integration. We've seen the power rule for differentiation. Now we're seeing it for integration. So if we have some power function here, x raised to the power r, and we want to integrate that function x raised to the power r with respect to x, how do we do it? Well, there's a formula here. It's 1 over r plus 1 times x raised to the r plus 1 and plus c. Now, you can remember this formula, but I feel that it's a little bit easier to think of this almost as a process, kind of a step-by-step -step process. So if we want to integrate x raised to the r, what do we do? First step is we keep the same variable. So if we're starting with an x, we keep it an x. So we keep the same variable. Then what do we do from there? The next step is to add 1 to the exponent. So our original exponent was r, so we're going to get r plus 1. And then once we have that new exponent, the third step is we multiply by its reciprocal. So of this new exponent, we're going to multiply by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal is just 1 over r plus 1. So we're going to multiply by um, that reciprocal. Put it in front and that's how we find that's how we do the power rule now this power rule doesn't always work there is a special case so it's important this only works when r does not equal negative one so it, it just about always works if we have a power function as long as this exponent is not negative one it works the only time we run into an issue is if that exponent is negative 1. And what that looks like, if we were going to integrate x raised to the negative 1, um, we generally think of this as the integral of 1 over x dx. And we'll get to this. We'll see what this is in a, in a little bit. But this is going to involve... Um, 
kind of a log a log function in some way. So we'll come back to this. Um, but for right now, if we have a power function, as long as that exponent is not negative one, we can use this power rule. All right, so let's try some examples. 